Good morning, folks. It's Freddie Vasquez. This is Basement Politics on Filter. Today, let's talk about drug use and crime within our city department. Freddie wins. Good morning, folks. Happy Tuesday. It's Freddie Vasquez. This is Basement Politics on Filter. This morning, I want to talk about problems within our city department drug use, crime. What's going on? Also, Republicans who are not Republicans. Good morning, folks. I'm Freddie Vasquez. This is Basement Politics on Filter. Hope you're having a good morning. I want to come on and just talk about some things. A lot of post ups today. Let's talk about it. First of all, uh, I do want to mention that there will be a mayoral debate between. Uh, the incumbent Democrat Mike Spano and Anthony Moranti. However, it's going to be virtual. So you have to register if you want to watch this debate. Now, I had a problem with that. Why is it going to be virtual and why not in person and on TV, you know, where people can watch it? Not everyone um, has, uh, you know, access to this stuff. Not everyone has Zoom. It's a Zoom thing. Not everyone is uh, savvy enough to get on it. So it's going to, you know, keep a lot of people from watching it. And I think that that's not okay. I think it should be done uh, on TV. It should be done live. People should be able to go there. Um, You know, so that's just hopefully we'll get to see a debate in person. But anyway, folks, I want to talk about DPW uh, and the employees, uh, you know, situation that's going down. I'm voting new people. Yeah, we need to vote new people for sure. It's time for change. And this is one of the reasons. Drug use in the DPW, Uh, you know, I have been receiving a lot of messages. I received a lot of uh, phone calls um, from employees, current employees, former employees who have spoken to me about the rampant drug use in uh, the city of Yonkers among city employees, uh, particularly DPW, right? And they're saying not only are people using drugs within DPW, but there's also drugs being dealt within DPW. Uh, Employees have told me of instances where individuals were high on drugs, driving city vehicles, damaging property, damaging the vehicles. Some employees have been found slumped over in their city vehicles, high on drugs. Some have crashed and hurt other people. And there have been city employees who have crashed and killed people, whether on drugs or under the influence of alcohol. I mean, from you know DPW guys to even a police officer have had these situations happen. And why is it still going on? Why hasn't there been some full thorough investigation into our city departments to find out what's going on there with this drug use? Uh, it's making it impossible for most employees to work. They don't want to work with a lot of these individuals. And the problem is, is that a lot of these individuals are connected. They are protected. And that's probably why they haven't been fired. I showed you a picture recently of a DPW guy getting it on with a woman in broad daylight on city uh, time, on taxpayer time, touching the woman inappropriately, putting his hands down her pants while leaning on a city vehicle. And why hasn't this individual been fired? They know. They know about it. And so this is why we need change this November. This is why we must vote out the individuals that are in office now. They are all part of the problem. Many of them are involved in some of these crimes. And so it's time to weed out. And so I posted uh, earlier about um, a la neighbor. Uh, look, I didn't say anything negative about your wife. You're right. I, I said uh, you have a pretty wife there. People have given me information about a la neighbor and, you know, the issues that he's having with substance abuse and how people need to be drug tested there. Right. And he went off the rails. He started to text me, making threats and stuff. City employee making threats to me. Uh take down what you wrote about my wife. I said, she, you know, a pretty, you have a beautiful wife. You know, you have a beautiful life. Don't mess that up is all I'm saying, right? I didn't drag your wife through social media for two years. My family didn't collude to fire your wife. Your family did. Your family colluded over at Roosevelt. There's a lot of neighbors in the Yonkers public schools. And at Roosevelt, there was an assistant who was now promoted to a principal neighbor. And there was an assistant teacher neighbor who made the comment to 
a student that my wife, an assistant principal, and her boss, her passes were no longer valid. So why would a neighbor say this to a student about my wife's passes? They're no longer valid? She's an assistant principal. She's your supervisor. They're more valid than yours. But obviously she knew that they were trying to fire her. But they screwed up because the first evaluation she got in February was an amazing evaluation. She was told by the principal there that they were looking to fire her and they were looking for anything negative on her to report. But he said, just keep doing what you're doing. You're doing a great job. However, come June, he must have had a lot of pressure put on him because then he gave her an evaluation that was a complete 180, made her look like a horrible assistant principal, and it was filled with complete lies. One uh, evaluation, the good one said that she did a great job leading the planning meetings. But for whatever reason, the evaluation in June where they recommended she be fired said that she never attended any of the planning meetings. So which one was it? Did she do a great job leading the planning meetings or did she never attend the planning meetings? Which one was it, homie? And why didn't fire her? Because as soon as I heard about it, I got on the phone and I spoke to some people and I said, this is, could get ugly. You guys fucked up. And I have a lot of documentation and I have your principal saying those words that they were looking to fire her and that it was coming from the top, 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 not the Board of Education, not the superintendent's office. That's what he said. And then they try to fire her. But I said, you want to do that? We're going to do this. And this is how we're going to respond. And they quickly adjusted. But not everybody was lucky because people get sent to Roosevelt to get fired. And there have been uh, staff members that were fired last year who were targeted. And it's unfortunate. And so if you want to reach out to me, Politic with Fred, Contact me, give me the information, let me know what's going on, because this is not a unique situation with my wife, right? It happened to Jose Diaz, happened to Alberto Velasquez, the CSEA president. Now he doesn't say anything about it because he's in a comfortable position, but they did the same thing to him. They transferred him to a situation where they were going to try to fire him because he was being vocal about what was going on between a principal and staff members at Enrico Fermi. This also happened to Anthony DiMaggio, who spoke out. This happened to other employees who have spoken out, who have reached out to me, but do not want to come out public. Some of them actually have legal cases going on currently against the city and against other uh, outside agencies who were brought in to try and destroy people's career. My wife worked hard, hard for this career. She is amazing at what she does. And they tried to take that from her. And there were neighbors involved. They tried to take her livelihood, her career that she loves so much, that she's worked so hard for, just because Freddie Vasquez has basement politics and he is speaking out on the things that they are doing, the corruption, the crimes, the unethical behavior. And it must end. The only reason why these people remain in these situations and are able to do this is because the people who are in power currently, they allow it. They have connections with them. It's time for that to change. This goes back 30 years now. It's time for this to change. And November, we have an opportunity to create change. No longer will we have leaders who attack people who speak out, attack their livelihood, attack their families, attack their businesses. We're going to start to attack back. And that's what I'm going to be doing here. So why haven't these individuals been fired? Why has an individual like Ala Neighbor, who is supposed to be a Republican, he was recommended by Mike Ramadelli to be the new sergeant at arms for the Republican Party, yet is throwing campaign fundraisers for the Democratic mayor. Which one is it, Ala? And why is the Republican Party allowing this? Why would they name this guy Sergeant at Arms when they know damn well that he's thrown several fundraisers now for the Democratic incumbent? Is he not supposed to be working for and helping Anthony Moranti, the Republican candidate for mayor? What about Jose Diaz? Of course not, because Ala Neighbor is too entangled with the current administration and those close to the administration. 
literally by marriage and of and other connections. He's a neighbor, and the neighbors are very well part, uh, very much so a part of the family and friends network. And they will do things like attack your wife or your husband or whoever at their job, collude to get them fired. They don't care. They don't have any compassion. They don't have any empathy, no sympathy at all for a woman and her family and kids. They wanted her gone bad. They were upset that she didn't get fired. In fact, they thought they had her dead to rights. And I quote, well, someone's going to be dead to right for sure. Folks, I want to show you this article here. Now, it's an old article from 2017, but it shows exactly what the problem is here and why we will never get investigations, legitimate investigation. City Council President Liam McLaughlin, who is now currently the Inspector General of the City of Yonkers, who has been asked by the Westchester County District Attorney to investigate nepotism and the hiring practices here in the city of Yonkers, but has not done so. His brother, Devin McLaughlin, was suspended for 30 days for failing a drug test given by the Yonkers Department of Parks and Recreation. The McLaughlin family tree is suffering re-election efforts, stress coupled by the seemingly diminishing prospect for incumbent Liam McLaughlin. So this was when he was running for re-election against Mike Cater. How else can anyone explain why brother Devin McLaughlin will come to lose it? Devin was caught failing what is known to be either a random alcohol or drug testing pr uh, procedure that found his results wanting. The test results earned him a 30-day suspension. It is not known whether the suspension is with or without pay. Logically, it would seem the latter. Then again, this is Yonkers, where Devin, unrelated to the Yonkers City Council uh, McLaughlin, it, it would be logical that Devin would be fired, right? If he wasn't related, he's saying to the city council president, he would have been fired. But again, this is Yonkers after all, and this is the second time he has failed such tests. So they don't fire these individuals because they are connected. Devin McLaughlin, uh, uh, Liam McLaughlin, his family go way back. Liam McLaughlin's mom was the head of this group that wanted to keep the schools and housing segregated. So how can we trust an individual like Liam McLaughlin to be the inspector general if his mother seems like a racist to me and he does not do any investigations at all? He allows his family members to get away with things that others would not. The only investigation he's done is into his former opponent, Mike Cater. He had an ax to grind? Possibly. Possibly. Hezzy, there are no leaders in Yonkers, only insiders. Blue truth proves what the police are about, without a doubt. How many fire commissioners has the Yonkers fire had recently? Both fire commissioners from within the ranks were disgraces and flops. This forced uh, Yonkers City Hall to get a real fire leader from the outside, FDNY, not once but twice. My reason for pointing this out is Anthony Pagano. Anthony Pagano is running on his leadership credentials, huh? He is or was the ultimate insider. Olsen looks like Father Flanagan compared to Anthony Pagano. Anthony Pagano was a Spencer Amicone insider and ran the fire union and fire commissioner spot as an insider bully. So they talk about Freddie being the bully. These are the bullies. His reign was one of layoffs, the demotions, and firehouse closings. Now the current fire union is desper in desperation is backing him. Y'all better know the devil y'all know. Y'all be know the better the devil y'all know. I guess y'all know better the devil y'all know. That's what I say is evil. Too bad and very, very sad for us Yonkers taxpayers. Too bad and very, very sad for us Yonkers taxpayer. I and many, many others will be looking forward to voting for Anthony Moranti. Folks, it's time for change. It's time for change. Nothing will happen. Yonkers continues to break many federal, state, and city laws. What else is new? I'm not particularly fond of Carrot Top in referring to Liam McLaughlin. As a matter of fact, I hope uh, never to lay eyes on him again for the remainder of my life. He is vile, despicable, lying piece of ish. And Kilo Cater is no better. And they're referring to John Cater. Can't be any worse than we have now. At least Cater is independent and not beholden to anyone. Well, at one time, you know, there was the Zahi Jerris deal, right? 
People versus Devin McLaughlin. Reviewing the evidence in light of most favorable to the people, uh, we conclude that it was legally sufficient to establish that the defendant, with intent to disfigure another person seriously and permanently, caused such injury by repeatedly punching and kicking the victim, causing, among other things, a permanent and noticeable change in the shape of his face. So this is Devin McLaughlin when he beat some guy, and I heard he ran the guy over with his car. Attempted murder. Yet and still... He was hired and he works for the city of Yonkers. You got to watch out for those DPW guys, right? You know, they may kill you. Uh, here, DPW was involved in the murder of former mayor Nicholas Wasisco. And that's actually what happened. He was not, he did not commit suicide. He was murdered. Point blank, period. Here are the specifics. Class B and a class D violent assault felonies. So he's not the only violent felon that works for the city of Yonkers. There's another individual that actually came to my house harassing me who works for the city of Yonkers. He works in city hall. And according to someone that knows him very well is a felon who committed a felony assault and served five years in jail. But he's not the only individual that works for the city that committed assault. Another individual committed assault with a deadly weapon. He pistol whipped the wife of the owner of a and Pizza on Morsmere while employed by DPW, went to jail for five years, is a felon, came back and got his job back. Why? Why, Yonkers? How does Tom Meyer, the head of DPW, allow this? Because that family is very well connected to City Hall. And I spoke about that many times. Smells like weed 24-7, the Parks Department office or War Memorial. <laughs> right? Hezzy, I know a few people that work for the parks that need to get tested. What should I do about this? But I don't want the word to go, go around town that I'm a snitch because I believe, and believe me, half the DPW and parks are under the influence. These are people from the city of Yonkers, people that are scared to speak out publicly. They're telling you this, folks, we need to listen. We need to wake up and see what's happening in Yonkers. It is being destroyed, destroyed from within. He was driving under the influence. I'm glad to know this guy was driving a Yonkers car under the influence. A lot of lives at risk that need to get out. It's true. And this is another problem. It puts residents at risk when these individuals are on drugs, driving city vehicles. Again, we have a 16-year-old boy that was killed by a city employee. Another man injured on Central Avenue when a city employee, drunk and high on cocaine, crashed into his car after driving the wrong way. A police officer crashed into a fire truck, killing himself. Another police officer getting into an accident under the influence. That was swept under the carpet. No one is fired except good people who speak out. And that's got to change. And by the way, Allah, remember when you were snitching on Brenton? So you do like to talk. You were snitching on Brenton. Bullock when he worked over at the parks and you were saying that he had COVID and he was the reason that everybody at the parks department got COVID and that he should be fired. Remember that? Instead, he was given a $92,000 position as the chief of staff for Tasha Diaz. The man barely works, but I hear that he gives Tasha a kickback of that money. Does he? That needs to be investigated, but Liam McLaughlin will never. Why should he be locked up? He committed a crime and went to prison for it. He paid his debt to society. What else does he need to do? Good people make bad choices. That's what they said about Stephen Dolan. Good people make bad choices or good bad things happen to good people. Remember that? Get off your high horse. I'm sure you have made some mistakes in your life. These are the people defending them. This is a part of a small group of individuals. So this is what is the problem here in Yonkers. Is this the same Liam brother who served a lengthy sen sentence in state prison for violently beating an innocent tourist in an NYC bar to near death? Is this the same Liam brother who was released early from the violent felony sentences as a fix from the state Senator Nikki Boy Jumbo Spano? 
This is not the first time that individuals have been released from prison early after committing crimes, violent crimes, and even murder because of their connection to elected officials. Look at Nader Sage's brother who was released early after he was convicted of selling prescription pills illegally. Dr. Sage, Nadeem Sage. Why did he get out early? Because Nader Sage flip-flopped on the vote to allow ex uh, exemptions for the vaccines, religious exemption, something that he was, you know, for supporting to keep. All of a sudden, he changed his mind. Why? Because they told him he better, he's going to get taken off those committees and his brother will not be released early. And so he flip-flopped just so he can have his brother released. And they're trying to get another individual out currently, an individual that has murdered someone. They had an, a whole interview on News 12. They used their connections with News 12 because they got News 12, you know, on lock. News 12 does whatever the city of Yonkers says. And they did this whole interview with an individual who murdered a man because they want to make him look good so they can get him released early part of the J Jordanian community. But the family of the man he murdered will never be able to come back to life. They will never be able to see him. We can't release murderers early. And how do they use their, their uh, 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 power, their resources to get this interview with News 12 to try and make people feel bad and so they can get an early release date for someone who murdered someone? That's what Nader Sage and them do. That's how they abuse their power. And it's not OK. How come the Journal News doesn't inform the citizens of the city of the incredible stupidity and gross illegalities that occur in Yonkers at the hands of Spano, Spencer, McLaughlin, Martinelli? Fire him and fire his brother from public office. Exactly. Why doesn't the Journal News report this? Why doesn't David McKay speak on this? Instead, he's hanging out with his bow tie buddy, another convicted felon. David McKay Wilson, you're not a true investigative journalist. That's for sure. So, we'll wait till the story breaks on some of the garbage truck drivers taking down cater signs and asking homeowners why do they have cater signs up. So they use city employees also for political reasons during elections, to go and knock on doors, to remove signs. I heard they were removing Debbie Kozak signs over at Homefield Bowling. But what's crazy is that those are all Nolan supporters. They're Republicans. So why would they take down Debbie Kozak's sign? Because there is no real Republican Party. People only support their friends, whether they're Republican or not. They support their friends and family. That is it. The people that could get them favors. That is it. If you give me a bunch of jobs, I don't care if I'm Republican. I'm going to support a Democrat. I'm going to hold fundraisers for you. I'm going to tell a bunch of people, come bring checks if you want a job with DPW, because the more checks you bring, the more likelihood you'll get a job with DPW, because the chair or the head of DPW is the chair of the Democratic Party. And he's going to love the fact that you're bringing checks for Democrats. So he will give you a job right away, right away. That's called paying for your job. That's what it is. Folks, this is a problem that we must change this year in these elections coming up. Uh, we have to come out and change. We have to come out and vote. We must vote for change. Vote Jose Diaz for sure. District 17 looks like crap. Jose Alvarado has not done a damn thing. What kind of elected officials do we have? What do they do for the people of Yonkers? Tell me what. Enough is enough. 12 years is enough for all of them. It's time that we bring in new leadership. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. This November, the silent majority must come out. We must release this city from being held hostage by thugs. We must stop this thuggery that's going on in this city. It's only going to get worse. Crime is going to continue to rise. Your taxes are going to continue to rise. Our homeless population is going to continue to rise. We're getting overcrowded now with people from the city and migrants. 
migrant children in our schools. Now I'm hearing from parents that are causing a disruption in the quality of education because now they're having to help students who speak English and those who don't. Classes are even more overcrowded now, but they haven't told you this. And they don't want to deal with students. I was on the phone with one mother yesterday who was so upset because over at School 24, they told her that her four-year-old is not ready for school. So instead of having him stay till 2.45, which is what he's supposed to be staying to, they have asked his parent to come pick him up at 11, pick him up early because he is not ready for school. But the problem is that they have not evaluated this child. Many children have not been evaluated and are being placed in the wrong classes. I have a second grader who cannot read at all, but yet and still he is not getting any additional support and he is in regular classes with kids who are reading already. My son, a second grader, can read just about any word. They're the same age, yet this kid cannot read two-letter words. Why is he in this class? Why is he not getting additional support? They're giving him math homework, but he can't read the problem. So how can he do the math problem? So not only do I have to help him with his math, but I have to help him with reading the problem first. Getting him to understand what it is the problem is asking of him. Yet and still, he has not been evaluated. He has not been put in a special class where they can help him get up to par. So how can we have a graduation rate of 90% when we have children who are not up to par? Are they just being pushed uh, uh, forward, move forward, regardless if they get it or not? This is what some staff have been telling me. They don't care if the kid gets it or not, especially when it comes to the migrant children. Just keep it moving. Our graduation rate, that's the pressure that our teachers are under. Make sure they graduate. Make sure they pass their regents at all cost. And this is why many are graduating and are unable to apply anything in the real world and they are suffering as a result. There's no job placement for these kids. There's no true technical uh, you know, courses. They have one school. How many students do they have? And who are the people that are suffering most? 77% of the student body is black and Latino. Living at or below the poverty line, while the staff members, those especially connected to the Family and Friends Network, are making over $220,000 a year. Why is a, a staff, a principal, making $221,000 a year? That's too much money. What are the return in that investment? Why is that person worth $220,000 a year when our schools are in need of money? Oh, because they are connected. And they get that special treatment. But our kids suffer. Our kids are pushed forward. Kids can't read. Kids can't do math. In our schools currently. But we have a graduation rate of 90%. Yet there's still generational poverty among the Blacks and Latinos here in Yonkers, but they're graduating at 90%. Don't you see the BS? It's election time. The lies come out. Don't be fooled by words. Look at what's actually happening. Look at the results. Your child is in Yonkers Public School. What are the results? Are you happy with what's going on there? If not, then we need to come out and vote for change. That's the only way it's going to change in the schools. It's the only way it's going to change here in the city of Yonkers. We need change. We need change. These people have held the city for far too long hostage, mismanaged the money. And now they're trying to bring in all these developers and new people with higher incomes to, with hopes of saving this city from financial ruin because that's where we're headed. We can't afford those pensions of the people making 200,000, almost 300,000 a year. This city is headed for financial ruin. You got a bunch of dummies in the council that don't know which way is up. They lack any intelligence, any real true education, maybe one or two, but then they're bought anyway. It's time for change. 
Do not vote the people that are in already because nothing will change that way. We have this opportunity in November. Enough. Drugs, crimes within our city. People can't get jobs because they save them for certain individuals who don't deserve them. This must change. We must get new leadership. And we must not allow that native sage to become the school superintendent because he does not deserve the position. It's a political position and it's not going to be good for our overall school district. He will do whatever he is told. We do not want a 70-some-year-old man who has been corrupt, who has stolen from many of the grandparents of the kids that are in the public school currently. In the 90s, you were stealing money from your clients who didn't speak English, using your Puerto Rican secretary. I know the hustle. It's time for change. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of the nonsense. I'm tired of the lies. I'm tired of the disgusting, evil people. All our neighbors, a city employee who is highly addicted to cocaine, City Yonkers needs to look into drug testing their employees at DPW. See, this is people reaching out to me. They're tired of it. They're tired of it. Listen, I know for a fact guys in DPW are strung out on pills and other drugs, on the clock, driving city vehicles, doing road work, all under the influence. Who remembers that guy, John, who hung himself in the garage a few years ago? That was the result of in too deep. Good guy. A lot of bad decisions. Spano's entire city is flooded with functional addicts. This has to change. I'm Freddie Vasquez. This is Basement Politics on Filter. We're going to keep going right through the elections. Freddie wins. I was raised in housing. I don't think you were. Folks, I'm Freddie Vasquez. This is Basement Politics. and corruption dies. If you're a Republican here in the city of Yonkers, you should be upset with your party. If you are a resident of the city of Yonkers, you should be upset with the entire government. It's time for change. I'm Freddie Vasquez. Have a beautiful and blessed day. Thank you, folks, for joining me. Please continue to support and share the podcast and send me the information. Politicwithfred at gmail.com. Politicwithfred at gmail.com. Together we make change.